morning. Good morning. We are in St. Neots, across from the On for Nse and Entertainment venue, the Prior Center. What it actually says is Conference and Entertainment venue. And it was the Priory Center. <laughs> anyway. So <clears> last time we left you, we were on the mooring down there and we we're about to go to London. We said, will the boat be here when we got back? Well, what actually happened is we we're about to leave. We were packed our bags. We'd disabled the engine and we were about to... All the electrics. Yeah. Yeah. The boat was all shut up and then one of the moorings came free on the pontoon outside the Priory Centre. So we re-enabled the boat and shot over there. So shot when, over there. When we went to London. Which was good fun because like I rapid, you know, I went to the back, put the, the engine starter key in to re-enable the engine, got the engine running, didn't bother turning on the electrics or anything. It's like, okay, we can just get over there. Literally like flipped the engine key on and started feeling cold water on my back. I'm like, oh, good. And it's begun to rain. By the time I actually made it up to turn on the engine, it started to pour. I get over to the far side. I'm sopping wet. Rain's finished. Time to walk <laughs> to the train. Good fun. So it's dry for the rain. So anyway. I wasn't, but you know. It yeah. was good to be on the pontoon because we're on a river and it's a floating pontoon and there was hard points to tie onto as opposed to pins in the meadow. And yeah. we were with other boats instead of on our own. So all in all, it was... It was the better option. Yeah. And then we came back from our visit with family and everything to find the boat perfectly uh, okay and unmolested, thankfully, and uh, jumped on board, spent a night on there, then moved over here to the 48-hour uh, moorings on the far side of the park here. I got to go to a movie. That was cool. Haven't been to a movie theater since the pandemic began. Didn't go to a movie down in Bedford because it was going to be too busy. This one, the tickets were like, yep, there's nobody buying any tickets. Okay, I feel like it's safe enough to go to a movie. Went to the movie, was like actually kind of emotional because I'm like, oh my god, it's been so long since I've been able to have the freedom to go to a movie. This is cool. Then the movie begins, there's giant starfish. It was hilarious. Uh, I do... a spider in your beard. Well, that's okay, I'm fine with that. Ah, get off, get off, get off! Okay, apparently you're not. <laughs> Um, that's what I have to deal with all the time. So, where'd George go now? There. George! George! That's not your boat! George! Such a rascal, that one. So yeah, I do recommend uh, Suicide Squad, if you feel, or THE Suicide Squad, I should say, if you feel like going to an absolutely absurd movie with mega violence. Um, but, yeah, giant starfish. And then, came back found a swan outside that had been being lethargic and people had noticed it and I hadn't noticed it until it started getting harassed by dogs and I fed it last night and was watching and just sort of seeing and it didn't seem completely like out of sorts last night like it was like a little off because it was staying on the grass and it was acting a little bit strange but it didn't seem completely you know sort of disabled it was really fighting off dogs it was biting my hand all that sort of thing yeah. But then this morning when I got up, it was completely lethargic, like staying in one place. It hadn't moved off the grass. It wasn't in the water. Yeah, and dogs were coming up to it and barking at it, and it would turn its neck and hiss at them, but it wouldn't try and move. And when I went up to it, it was... It let me feed it, and it let me put down some water for it, and I put some food down in the water so it would get something to drink. And I could see food going down its neck, and I could see that it was, you know, able to swallow. So... Kind of figured, well, good, it's not off its food. I uh, called the RSPCA. Um, they told me that it would be quite a while, so we were just waiting here. We decided we wouldn't turn and leave until the swan was picked up. Uh, but then a person who was walking by, just walking her dog, was really lovely. She she saw it, talked to me for a while, heard the, you know the story of the poor thing being harassed by some dogs and stuff, and and she was just like, oh well, hold on. I'm waiting for my car to get repaired. I've got a little bit of time, so I'll sit over here and do some research. I'm local. So she signed on and got onto the local Facebook page, and then the people on the local Facebook page gave her the name of a local uh. rescue that is now in operation in God Manchester called the Wildfowl, um, was called the Wildfowl Sanctuary. She gave them a call, got a hold of a guy named Graham there, who said, I'm putting my coat on and I'm on my way. Oh. <laughs> and so she arranged for, for uh, the pickup, she walked over and, and met Graham as he came up to the parking lot and directed him over. And he comes running up and, and uh, yeah, he just instantly knew what to do. He just picked the swan up straight away. Well, yeah, he basically was like, is she injured in any way? Can you, you know, can you point me towards anything? 
Um, and I was like, nope, she seems fine. So he just went in and grabbed her, picked her up, and started feeling her neck and found a lump near, kind of above the crop area. And, um, and so he was like, no, there's, yeah, there's something in there, something sort of large and solid. So either she swallowed something that she shouldn't have, fishing line or lure or whatever, or, you know, she's gotten a rock or something. Or could some, it have been a grace or something like that? It could be, but he said it felt kind of hard, so he thought he's going to get a metal detector uh -huh. um, that he's got for it, and he's going to do a endoscope, so they'll put a little camera down her neck and, and find out. Um, I but, keep saying her, but the fact is, is that she is under two years old and had not done her first molting. Um, so he was able to identify that she's not sexually mature, so it isn't actually clear if it's male or female. Hello everyone, we're in St. Neots. We've just picked up this poorly swan that's been reported as being listless. Um, she's got a little lump somewhere in her throat, so we're going to take her back to ours. Uh, we run the Waterfowl Sanctuary in Godmanchester. We've got lots and lots of ducks, geese and swans that we look after. We're a growing organisation, registering as a charity. Uh, come and have a look at us on Facebook. Uh, it's facebook.com forward slash the Waterfowl Sanctuary. And this one that's been named locally is Belinda. We're going to check her out, have a look down her throat to see what this little lump is and look after her. And when she's well, bring her back and release her. So, yeah, we're leaving quite a bit later than we intended. Mm -hmm. um, heading back to God Manchester area, maybe... Which is in that direction. So, we'll have to turn around. Yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe on the cow moorings that I really liked before. I'm wondering if we should go into God Manchester and see if that place is free. It probably isn't. But I'd rather not be in God Manchester itself. Oh, George is making friends. Oh, that's good. You'd rather not be in God Manchester itself? <laughs> On the weekend. So it might be better to go there today. Right, okay. Yeah, and then turn around and come back to the cow Yeah. Yes. And also... All of this so I can grab the train. And the bus. And we probably get fuel on the way. Yeah. But George is off being a delinquent, so we should go and retrieve our dog and get on our way. Yes, before he steals that kid's soccer ball. Next to the Priory Centre is the St Neots Rowing Club and unlike the last time we came through St Neots when the regatta was on, there are no rowing boats out on the water today. On the other side of the river, the park extends along the riverbank. Next to the rowing club is the Ouse Valley River Club. On the far side of the park are some really large houses with even larger gardens set back right onto the water. Do you fancy giving up boat life and moving into one, George? actually see it back there but there is a boat that's set off behind us which is good news because then we can share the extra long lock uh, St Neots lock I think it's just called um, yeah it's got someone to share with so that's good We're now passing a golf course to the left and St Neots Common is off to the right. Those boats ahead are moored at Cross Hall Marine. The lock and there was a boat in front of us in the lock that's just gone through no one coming upstream um, I was waited a little bit to see if, if a boat would turn up but they haven't 
Um, there was a boat behind us, um, a narrow boat, but they have disappeared or they seem to have disappeared. So unless they turn up soon, we won't be able to have a look with them. And uh, Michael's just filling it for us. St Neot's Lock is a reversible lock, which means that in times of flooding, the gates at both ends can be padlocked open. This allows the flood water to escape downstream more quickly. It goes without saying that narrowboats should not be on the move in those conditions. Just come into the lock and the narrowboat didn't turn up, but there is a little boat coming, so we'll just wait to see if they want to come into the lock. Nope, they're turning around. shut the gates and we were just about to drop the lock and then in the distance I saw the narrow boat so we're gonna wait for it obviously. The crew on the other boats have very kindly offered to operate the lock for us, and that's an offer we can't refuse. days ago I took a really long walk along here and on my way back there was a torrential thunderstorm just when I reached this point so I sat on that log and sheltered under this lovely tree. The church in the village of Great Paxton dates back to the 11th century and it looks quite lovely from the river. We spot a weir ahead which means we must be approaching Offord Lock. There are rubbish and recycling bins at this lock, so we take the opportunity to use them while we're filling the lock chamber ready for the boat.
get down to the boat on the lock landing, George and I first have to cross the road bridge. On the boat. Good boy. This is Buckden Marina. We're going to stop here for some diesel and they have a lovely clear service point for us to pull up at. We pulled up for diesel about 15 minutes ago and um, we called them because it says call for service and they said someone will be right down. So Michael's just wandering over because we're also curious to how much it is because if it's the price that's on the pump it's not cheap um, and Michael's called another marina. I don't know which one but um, he's got their price as well so we can do a quick comparison. Okay, so it may not have been the fastest service, but they definitely made up for it by being incredibly friendly. What a pleasant stop. And now we're back on our way again. There's another weir ahead, this one is for Brampton Lock. Well that's good timing, there's a boat leaving so we'll be able to go straight in. Brampton Lock has one of the rather unusual D-shaped chambers. We're back at the lovely peaceful cow field, although these moorings seem very popular today. We will come back here in a few days to use them, but for now we're going to try our luck half a mile downstream at God Manchester. What does my face look like? It looks like my face. Don't like <sighs> I'm annoyed. Can I tell why? 
Joe has limited patience. Don't have limited patience. This woman is really rude. Wow. You didn't hear her. No. I mean, we, I get it. I They've got an expensive oh, looking I get plastic it. boat. But the rudeness I don't get. Yeah, well, you know. So we pulled up. I get the rudeness because let's just say that there's an observation to be made about <laughs> the passive aggressiveness of a certain kind of Anyway. I, we're boring, boring up and I get off at the front and the woman comes off this boat, comes marching up and announced to her friend, not to me, no hello or greeting to me, and that's to her friend, I'm just going to make sure that this don't, this boat doesn't put a, put a hole in our boat. And me, like a little bit shocked, but still friendly, was like, oh, don't worry, he knows what he's doing. She was like, well, that's what the last boat that hit us said. <laughs> and she went, then she went, I'm sorry, but I'm just fully aware of the, what the damage a steel boat can do to to a boat like mine. And a I, plastic boat. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I wish I'd said plastic boat. And I said, don't worry, so are we. Um, and like Michael didn't get within a metre of the boat. Like, one, he knows what he's doing. And two, he had me signalling with my fingers telling him how many feet away from me was, like we always do. And she stood there and then she realised that she was in no danger. Then she started chit-chatting. Oh, I don't even know your name. I'm like, no, you don't know my name because you marched over here and was incredibly rude. <laughs> and then she said, oh, what's your boat called? So I did perseverance and then she skulked off after that. Yeah. But um, it's very unnecessary. And yeah, I do understand, like, you've got an expensive boat and you want to, you want to make sure it's not damaged. But being that rude is not going to stop it getting damaged. No, plus, if we're being honest about the whole experience of things, and I've got nothing against cruisers, I understand why people buy them. I understand, you know, certainly that they're probably a better choice if you're going out onto fast flowing rivers and if you're going out onto the sea and everything. But at the same time, there is this one thing that I've noticed, which is that, especially when it comes to mooring up, people on narrow boats have had to figure out how to not bash the hell out of things. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, our boat does look beaten up, so it you may be think that we hit things, but most of the marks on our boat from other things hitting us. Yes, to be and those things that have hit us have almost exclusively been made out of fiberglass. glass. <laughs> but anyway, it was just not the welcome to the mooring that I was hoping for. And funnily enough, last time we moored here when we were going the other way, there were some people on a higher boat that thought we'd hit them. And Even though we'd never been anywhere close to their boat, and we had a camera recording when we did it. Uh, so it's this mooring. Yes, it's, it's God Manchester. <laughs> but, so um, here we are. Michael insisted on coming here because of the chip shot. Well, hold on. Is that's that not, fair? That's, uh, uh, yeah, okay, fine. There, there's, there's a bus I need to catch tomorrow to go to Cambridge. The bus comes straight through God Manchester. If I go to Huntingdon, then I've got to walk to God Manchester. If I ended up in Huntingdon Town, I end up having to walk to God Manchester. So there was this part of me going, well, one way or another, if I can get to God Manchester, I can take this relatively cheap bus rather than take the train, the train which is considerably more expensive. Probably um, more reliable. But... Probably more reliable. It takes about the same amount of time. But we're here. And there's 48 hours here, and there's chips here, and there's bus here, and so it's a good, nice, and attractive place to be. We liked God Manchester the last time. Yeah, it's really, just really gorgeous cruise. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. We keep getting lucky with weather, which doesn't always happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's one. It has been raining on our days not cruising. Yeah, we've had, we've had like, it's, we're not cruising today. It was just hammering down rain yesterday. Joe yeah. went for a walk. What did you do? Ten miles? And you know, I'm just, I'm just sitting there typing away, and all of a sudden, I'm like, hmm, sounds like I'm typing, but I'm not typing. What's just? Oh and my gosh! The rain was hitting him before me. So Michael was like messaging me, find oh, cover he's now. He's like, find cover now. It's coming. And she's like, what? And you know, <laughs> the sun's shining. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I was just, just this absolute, like, just hammer beat of, of just enormous amounts of rain, and then today it's just been gorgeous you know glorious and blue sky and and okay until now when clouds are starting to suck in it's been great and and this is the thing if you get lucky with weather though just, and you've got a, a nice sunny yeah. day this is it's just magical yeah it's i mean it's really strange just how 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 we we've left you know 
the ooze for last. Yeah. Essentially, like the well, there's still the neen in front of us, and there's still the mid levels, and I don't know. They might be better. They might be worse. But the thing is, is that we we spent all this time, sort of, you know, scouring the system, going all over the place, and there's some really beautiful places, but there's a lot of not necessarily gorgeous in between. Yeah. So you have to, you, yeah you have a day of nice and then some grotty places or whatever. Yeah. But this. Well, this is just consistently since, gorgeous. Since we came off the wash at the end of May. It's just all been gorgeous, and we timed it. To, we didn't deliberately do it, but we've ended up here for like spring and summer, late spring, early summer, well, midsummer now, and it's just we just feel really lucky at the moment. Yeah. Because we slowed down a bit as well. Yeah, Not but the whole of the use has been absolutely just yeah. you know from Cambridge and the Cam to to the Loads to to the um, the Wizzy and. The little lose, and it's just yeah. This is this is definitely the place where it'd be like, if we're going to buy a house with a mooring, yeah, consider. I can afford it. But also, no, no, if you can afford it. <laughs> but also, like it's mid-August, and fair enough, the moorings have all been fairly full, but traffic's uh, been relatively low. Yeah. Yeah. The only downside is you've only got forty-hour moorings everywhere. So while we have slowed down, I don't know how we've done that when there's been. Well, for the most part, the advantage of here has been, yes, there's 48 hour moorings, but they're relatively close, close and together. fairly balanced with the amount of traffic. Yeah. Like, there's relatively few times where we've actually been like, oh, there just is no mooring space. Yeah. And we filled up with diesel today. And, and the guy who was doing the diesel was just like super sweet and friendly yeah. and like, you know. I was like on the point he of He was getting, in love with George. I was on the point of getting annoyed because he, when you get to the pontoon, you phone up and they said, someone will be right down. And it was about, 25 minutes, half an hour, mm -hmm. and I was, just, I was, I was just getting annoyed. And then he turned up, and he was the first thing he did was go up to George, and I was like, "All right, I'm not annoyed anymore." <laughs> he wants his own boat. Hi. Hello. That's a, that's a great kid. I, just, I like his attitude. He's like, "I will go under the fence." No, 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 you're not allowed under the fence. I will go over the fence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, he's got tactics down. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we were able to to um, get the diesel. It did take 25 minutes for him to show up. But when he showed up, he really liked George. He was super friendly. Uh, it was nice to talk to somebody else who'd been out on the wash. And and yeah, then it was a short trip up here. Uh, the locks today were pretty easy. The people were nice. The, uh, yeah, well, the, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, just been lucky on the weather. I don't know. It's just one of those days where I come to it at the end. And I'm just like, man, I'm really glad we get to do this. Yeah. So, but on that note, it's time to finish the video and then go get some chips. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get our time lapse videos. And click the bell if you want to get notifications. Also, don't be a petunia. It's more fun to drive. <laughs> you can't go under, Baba. One day, when you, when you, when we, one day we can. One you can day come. Day. You can come see the boat, but I can't let you drive the boat. <laughs> is it one day today? Today is one day. Today is one day. Ah. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe how old are you? How old? Are you? Three. Three and a half. Three. Okay. Maybe. Maybe in 13 years. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe when you grow up and you yeah, just just a l little bit taller. Mm -hmm.